combination of Hagrid meets Yoda when it comes to the local media. Uh, <laughs> Hagrid meets Yoda. <laughs> Man, really, really spanning the generations there with the pop culture references. Tony, tell us about your artistic efforts right now. How's the band going? Uh, well, for all the artistic types listening out there, we're currently in need of a drummer. So if there's any drummers out there that are willing to leave the house that do not have a Norman Bates-esque relationship with their mother. <laughs> oh, and I will, I'll, I'll add this, too, because one of my pet peeves about finding drummers when I was playing in bands on a regular basis was, uh, well, yeah, you're a drummer. Do you own a drum set? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's... Well, I, then you're not a drummer. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're not even a drum owner at You're a that guy point. that bangs on things. <laughs> Tony, you're you're up. In, are you still up for an award from uh, for the Creighton? I am. Yeah, I'm up for best male vocalist for some godforsaken reason. But of course, a shout out to the boys. Tony Jones and the Creighton Three is up for best punk band uh, in the Motif Music Awards. And then, if you pick up the newest Motif, it's the cannabis issue, and you'll see my article in there uh, dealing with uh, dealing with industrial hemp. So we always. When it comes to alternative media, they've kind of been doing it a while. Uh, we send a big shout-out to Motif Magazine. Upstairs from us right here was the Providence Phoenix, and at one point in this market you had the Phoenix and you had Motif, and the Phoenix was Goliath and Motif was David, and now uh, Motif is still hanging in there, and the, they're doing well. I wouldn't, well I wouldn't I say Motif is Goliath. They're just remaining. <laughs> <laughs> they're the last guy standing. Well, the media landscape continues to change and evolve here in Little Roadie. Um, the age old stalwarts, the, the urinal, WJAR, <laughs> are, are starting to fall on hard times and becoming less relevant in the marketplace. You know, a few exceptions. You know, we've got a couple of favorite investigative reporters on all of them. Um, WPRI, for all its efforts and all its success, investigative journalism continues to be something of a ratings failure. Um, folks, I believe, are moving to the internet, obviously, not just for primary news but for content and supporting information, underlying facts, original research, all of which can be had much more readily and without some of the, shall we say, bias exhibited <laughs> by local media or just some of the shallowness exhibited by local media. Wait, bias? You mean they don't like colored people or like is that the bias you're talking about? They don't like independent media people either, Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, uh, uh, rising and first so, of all, uh, so it's it's the true meaning of prejudice. They don't like anybody that's not them, right? Yeah. Then you've got ascendant several organizations. We like to think the Coalition Radio US is newly ascendant, particularly given the activities of the past few week. A special shout out has to go to who someone we consider the goddess of local intermedia, <laughs> and of course that is Kate Nagel. Kate Nagel. Uh, Kate Nagel. Uh, wicked smart. Wicked good writer. Um, <laughs> not afraid of confrontation, not afraid of getting in people's grill. You know, incredible, uh, incredibly deft turnaround on emerging and evolving events. I think that's what we enjoyed the most. We, we saw Kate Nagel but, this week but, at her but, best. But finding angles that nobody else is touching on these stories, they have been all over this Paw Sox Stadium from, uh, you know, from the actual deal itself to – who the the power players are and who they contribute to politically. I mean, this these are important questions to ask. You know, how much money did Skefco give to Gina Raimondo, to Nicholas Mattiello, to like? Let's be honest, folks. They're they're out there making these contributions because they're buying political favors. And that's right. what they're doing. And that's and, the beauty of alternative media. I mean, the, the setup we have here today. We could be in an event. I could have this set up in 15 minutes, and we could be broadcasting to hundreds of thousands of people at a moment's notice. And we're seeing that with Go Local. The content is fresh, and it's up in minutes. It's not read about it in a few days, hear about it a few days later when everybody's sick of it. Uh, I mean, the, the freshness of the content for people looking to stay informed is there now. Well, good friend Russ Moore, who's also a freaking contributor to the coalition, also writes, and of course, we for uh, Go Local, and you know, right, so we, I consider one of the seminal columns in Rhode Island, the weekly Who's Hot and Who's Not. Um, Misery Muzzy seems to spend an inordinate amount of time on the Who's Not list, post-Blizzard. Um, 
But what I what should she just be the default not position? On, <laughs> like the first not is just Gina Raimondo because really, there's not a week that goes by that you can't find something <laughs> that she's not hot for, right? And you know, and then you've also got the other standing headline, the other punchline in a political punditry. And that, of course, would be Nikki Polly Walnuts Mattiello, <laughs> uh, who's been so quiet lately. You know, he, which scares he the living uh, shit out of me. <laughs> he, well, you know, and we, Pat and I have talked about this before. You know, one of the beauty parts of, of doing what we do and being an independent media outlet and owning the content that we that we create is, um, you know, we don't have to worry about our access because we don't have any access. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can say what we want, when we want to say it, and how we want to say it. And if it offends somebody, so much the better. In the words of the immortal Bette Midler, yeah. fuck them if they can't take a joke. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? That's really, most of them can't take a joke. They can't. Or they're, they're too stupid the, to understand that they are the joke. Right. The, the right the, like they can't understand that they're, not, that, 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 that they're not caricatures of themselves. The right, the hard right, the hard left, the one thing they have in common is they have the inability to smell their own bullshit. And that's why I was surprised earlier this week, Pat, that you wasted your time calling out Mark Patinkin. Because when I think of somebody who is no longer relevant, I think of the Providence Journal and Mark Patinkin wearing mom jeans. But but sometimes you're tired and you just need an easy target. You know? <laughs> he is what you call a target-rich environment. Uh, you know, the trouble is he's become... I had a conversation with Mark Patinkin a few years ago before we started the call. He becomes the last man standing at Projo, in my opinion. Yeah, he, he, he ultimately has become a parody of himself. Here's a guy who's an immensely talented writer who, when he first started with the urinal, actually wrote big stories <laughs> on big things. He, 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 he attacked big ideas. Unfortunately now, it's either, it's either observational humor, in other words, he's the east side liberal version of a wannabe Jerry Seinfeld, or increasingly personal and simultaneously awkward reflections on his own family life, uh, followed by the occasional show piece for whoever seems to be in charge or might not threaten his probably inordinately high paid package at said Providence Journal, while the rest of the guild gets crucified at the slaughterhouse called... What's the latest? I don't even remember. Who owns them now? Gatehouse. Gatehouse Media. <laughs> Slaughterhouse Media. I hereby, di- I hereby dictate that on the coalition, they will now be referred to the Providence. Slaughterhouse Media. Pro- Providence Urinal. And uh, by the way, as we say. Subsidiary of Slaughterhouse Media. Slaughterhouse Media. And by the way, we must, as in spirit of full disclosure and good journalistic integrity, give a shout out to Philippe and Jorge, who are the inspiration for us in so many ways. They really are. Uh, you know, I got to say. You guys plagiarized too? Uh, I, I give full credit, babe. I mean, you know, it was, it was, by the way, for the record. Well, no, we steal ideas, not words. <laughs> Wait, um, it, was, it was Kate Nagel who came up with Skeffonomics, and it was Kate Nagel who came up with the unused yet soon to be important Twin Riverton. Okay, <laughs> I love that Twin Riverton. Yes, that's Kate, awesome. Uh, Kate Nagel uh, came I, up with You know, I'll, well. I'll say this about Philippe and Jorge. Uh, if if y'all out there don't know, Philippe and Jorge are two guys by the name of Bruce McRae and Chip Young. They're both great guys. Bruce McRae, also known as Rudy Cheeks, if you remember that from back in the day, uh, but. Uh, you know, Chip is, a, is a, a fellow down at the Metcalf Institute at URI. He's really involved in environmental issues, and uh, I can't say enough good things about Chip. Uh, he was instrumental with uh, what we did at EcoRI News in the first couple of years that we were up and running. Uh, I don't know if we could have done it without his support. Uh, so I, I just want to give a shout-out to both those guys who – who have a knack for uh, saying the right thing at the wrong time. And, and, that, I, and, and I think that's a beautiful thing. And, and cert- we certainly we aspire to that, uh, you know, poking the bear that needs to be poked. And that comes back, I think, to content is king because like the coalition, like their column, they were always able to find a home. So it wasn't but a week that they missed when the Providence Phoenix went out of business that they were – Back in Motif and on uh, HJJ, I mean, the, the column literally right. skipped one week. They're good at what they do, so they're in demand. Yeah. It's, it's really that simple. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're aspiring to do that at the coalition. Uh, again, you know, we, we, we don't have to worry about sacrificing access because we don't have any. <laughs> 
So that, that frees us up. That gives us a very, very wide berth at the coalition to say what we want, to write what we want, to, to promote issues and ideas from other groups and other people that you're not going to see on Rhode Island Public Radio, on the Pro Joe, on HJJ, on WPR. You're just not going to see these issues and opinions. There. And that's why people stay awake during our broadcasts. <laughs> right. Because because they go, what are they going to say next? Are they going to say something ridiculously outrageous next? <laughs> um, and I think even on broadcast radio, you know, aside from and we've been really good tonight about the f bombs and the GDs, and <laughs> we haven't really gotten into that. Um, but you know, w- we say things that nobody else is willing to say uh, to speak truth to power. And whether or not power is listening, we don't care because we're, we're just going to keep saying it. Well, and I know I've mentioned this before, and I'm sure you had to come through the same decision, was that when I decided to run for office, the girlfriend and I really had to sit down because when you run for office and you file your paperwork, your home address becomes public record. So I really had to sit down and think, of all the people that I've offended over the years, do I want them all knowing where I live? <laughs> And luckily, no tires were slashed in my particular race. <laughs> you know, honestly, I didn't really have that discussion because I, I didn't have a girlfriend at the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've always been of the, of the, the assumption that, uh, you know, as, a, as somebody in the public eye, I'm just going to tell the truth. Is that how you... You know, if, if, if somebody says... You know, have you ever smoked marijuana? I'm going to say yes, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> Is that how you talked the PO taxpayer into becoming Pat Ford? No, I, I think I think that Pat is is mildly schizophrenic, <laughs> and <Mildly>? that. <laughs> Use the mic. Use the mic, Pat. Mildly? We're we're on, we're on the radio. <laughs> Um, oh, shit, we're live on the radio. I, I think he. Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay, I, I think Pat. Ralph I, and, and one of the most endearing things about my friend Pat Ford is that he he moves seamlessly between the egos of Pat Ford and the PO taxpayer. But, uh, he used to take he used to take great pleasure in the fact that everybody wanted to know who the PO taxpayer was, and you love shoving it up their butt. Well, it's only because the Facebook know. police. If it wasn't for the Facebook police. I never. I I enjoyed the fact that people got really annoyed and yeah. frustrated by it. Yeah. I mean, oh, and they did. And, and, I mean, and, it was and, a thing. And if it, if they they, what they never fundamentally understood was as in many cases in dealing with political opposition, their sheer outrage, their sheer agony is what motivates me. I want to see <laughs> that them was suffer. fuel. Yes, it was fuel to the fire. All right. Uh, what is it? We want to. What, what's one of our mottos? We want to rip people from the suburbs of their minds. That's right. All right. We we want to be the burr under people's saddles. Right. We want to be that branch in the woods when you're running through the woods that almost hits you in the eye and takes your eye out. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, it's not painful, but it's really goddamn annoying. <laughs> Right. I mean, it's so I took great pleasure because people would, would wax on for paragraphs and scream at you and yell at me as if somehow they were going to insult me. I think we all know that I'm relatively uninsultable. <laughs> you know, I, it's just it's all good. <laughs> One of your most endearing qualities, yeah, actually. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, there's not you're, many. You're the only guy I know table. that steals my fat jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is what it is. So I mean, I you know when any of these clowns, I mean. One person said to me once on the, you know, at a political event, you're just a car salesman. And I said back to them, what do you do? And they said back to me, well, I work in tech. And I said, oh, I used to work in tech. Don't you want to go back? I, I'd love to, but I can't afford to cut and pay. <laughs> <laughs> Shut them the fuck up. What, what, <laughs> earlier this year, and I'll, I'll say this, this was probably my New Year's resolution this year was... I am no longer going to suffer fools gladly. Yeah, why? And and <laughs> I am no, and and on top of that, I am going to offend those that I find offensive. Right. I mean, you know, there's this there's this notion from some people that we hold very near and dear that aren't you worried about what they'll think? They hate us anyway. <laughs> they right. loathe us. Right. Again, why do we have to worry about our access when we have none? Right. I mean, <laughs> 
and, and 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 when you can't get a quote, make it the fuck up. Right, <laughs> right. If you, and if you don't like what's being said in the news, then make your own goddamn news. Exactly. I mean, you. If you're going to sit idly by and scream and rail against the wind, if you if you're going to.